Mm. Let me ask you about mindfulness. What is mindfulness? Okay, uh, that's a good question. M mindfulness is uh, critical. You either are aware of what's going on in the two things that I brought up, the body and the mind, or you're not. If you're not aware, you're asleep. If you are aware, you're awake. And you've heard in Buddhism people talking about the Buddha as being the awakened one, or people who reach nirvana or become enlightened or become are people who are awake. Well, that's just it. If you're asleep, there's no mindfulness. Mindfulness knows what's going on in the present moment. That's all it is. It's just that awareness factor. That awareness factor is constant and, and continuous. It's, it's there all the time. It's an option. If we take that option in any mind moment, we're awake. And every time we take that option, we, are, we get like one unit of uh, spiritual energy comes up. And this one unit is collected and collected and collected until awareness becomes spontaneous and continuous and you're finished. The job is done. You've completed the course. There's no more sleep time. Sleep is gone. There's just the wake. When Buddhists talk about karma or karmic conditions, can you can you elaborate on that? Human beings actually being a karmic condition. We need to know what karma is. Uh, where does karma come from? Karma comes from two sources, either intentional good karma or intentional unskillful karma. There's just two things that can come out of any volitional actions. These energies uh, accumulate. Negative energy energies accumulate and, and bring our life down, make our life heavy, heavier than it already is. Positive karma is the kind of energy that uh, creates the ability to move towards evolution, to move towards enlightenment. The idea isn't to have uh, accumulate nothing but good karma, however. The idea is to get beyond karma so that we get, we, we come to see that positive karma and negative karma, they're both karma. And it's this karma that spins the wheel, wheel of rebirth. When the wheel is stopped, that is, there is no more karma, we get off the wheel, there's no more rebirth, there's no more suffering, there's no more having to go through this stuff that we have to go through for 10, 20, 50, 70, 100 years. We get off, we get out. Change, <clears throat> suffering, no self. Why are they grouped together? What, what does this mean? Well, they're grouped together because they're your principle. They're true in every moment. Every situation that comes up, they're, they're law. Change is, everything is in flux and flow. Most people can't even see that. This is kind of the basic one, the basic part of those three aspects. Everything is in flux and flow. Yeah, you might have thought, think of it yourself as being the same person you were 10 years ago, but you're not. Everything's changed. You're not any, anything like the person who was 10 years ago in, in this body, in this form. Suffering or unsatisfactoriness, that's going to continue all the time. It's got to be there. If there's change, there's going to be suffering. You're not going to want things to change. You're going to suffer. And suffering is going to could be there all the time because change is there all the time. They're linked together. Third one, no self, is the most sophisticated one. You think about yourself as being a person all the time. You think uh, you're a son or a father, a brother, a uh, caregiver, um, a worker, a consumer. You have all these identities. None of them are true. You can see that and if you got up right now and you walked and you just walked, watched yourself walking, Greg is walking, you have that perspective. So you're not that. There wouldn't be that perspective there if you were who you think you are. So we, we can start to see this key one, because all the suffering comes from this last one, thinking you're somebody. If you're nobody, where is suffering going to come from? Where's it going to stick to? Mm -hmm. 
or is this a fantasy? Is it a fantasy that there's that there actually is somebody there? We have to brainwash ourselves to think there isn't. Or well, some people might think about think of it that way in a kind of an intellectual way, philosophical mm, uh, corner on that. But it's not propaganda. It's reality, and it's, it it's not easy to come to. And that's why meditation or the practice of developing the mind and seeing things as they are in the present moment, both in the body and mind, will lead you to understanding that there's nobody there. There's no continuous, permanent entity that's going to, even after the body dies, uh, reappear in some other form, because there never wasn't anybody there in the first place. How long have you been doing this, and what brought you to this? Desperation. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't. Uh, I just couldn't take any more. Actually, I mean, I think there was a movie out around a time before I ordained, where this one guy, a successful businessman, up in the 60th floor of some building, and, you know, he's a rising star. He's been doing this for 10, 15 years, but it's. Uh, Something he knows is no real meaning, and it's violating his, his spirit the whole time. And finally, one day, he just opens the window and says, I can't take another minute of this. And I cut stronger language than that, perhaps. And it's just like that. And it's like, if you see the situation, you see the fact that you're going to be exploited for your labor, you're going to have your time stolen from you, and there's going to be all these things coming around to distract you. In fact, it's a whole conspiracy to keep you from knowing who you think you are, who you really are. It allows you to, to, to be who you think you are uh, with, uh, in e with ease. But we're not who we think we are. We're something much more than that. And unless you take the, have the boldness to get out from under all that, uh, you're not going to come to this point. When you ask, when you talk about me being a monk, a, a, a monk in the Theravada tradition means the word bhikkhu is the word that signifies monk. And bhikkhu means one who is striving to come to the end of the world. Which world? This personal world that we create, this constructive world, a, a world that's, uh, that's built on... Uh, ideas and concepts and other people's ideas, i.e. beliefs. Is any of this true? Well, I wanted to find out. <laughs> 